Hello everyone, welcome back to Heartline Topics. Popular Yoruba actress Yetune Wumi, whose real name is Hazanat Taiwo Akiwande, was born on February 22, 1960. She's currently 59 years old and she'll be 60 years old on February 22nd, 2020. She has been in the industry for 40 years. She joined the acting world in 1981 as an apprentice under Sunday Akiola popularly known as Moga Jifei Kogbo, but later left in 1989 to team up with Alade Arumire. The actress has appeared in so many movies that she has even lost count of them. A little about her background, she grew up in Egbado and Ibado. Her parents are Mr. Sura Kat Akiwande and Mrs. Olufunke Sabainat Akiwande. She had two older brothers, one is late, and she has a twin sister, Kende. Yetunde Wumi is a twin. She attended Ansaruddin Primary School in Ilaro, Ogun State. This actress was already married with kids before she started her acting career. What was the first paying job she ever did? She has always been self-employed as a businesswoman. What other jobs does she do? I said acting. As mentioned earlier, she has always been self-employed. She was into buying and selling. What really made her go into acting then? She said she received an inspiration from God that that was back in the year 1981. Who were her role models back then? She loves and admires all the leaders that she met in the field. So no one specifically is her role model. What was her first role in theater, in TV or movies? She played the role of a group member in the television series titled Feiyu Kogbo. What was her major breakthrough role and in what film, series or play? In the weekly television program, the same one, Feiyu Kogbo, where she starred as Yetunde in various series then. Since then, the name Yetunde has stuck, and barely a few even know her real name. What were the constraints that she faced back then? and overcame as an upcoming actress. She said her husband criticized her in the first place about the craft, and it had adverse effect on her matrimonial home. In those days, how was she able to manage her family and her acting profession? Well, her children are grown-ups now, but then they were still young. She had a junior one who was staying with her and assisted her in looking after them when she was not there. So she just drops money for them to eat and equally bought foodstuffs at home. Back then, Yetunde Wumi could leave the house for two or three months before returning. Yetunde Wumi has only two children. How many films exactly has she been involved in? Several of them, including Ayo Okunri, Omo Okunri, Odumejo, Adeori, Oromole, and Jamalaya, just to mention a few. So, how many movies has she produced? A lot as well, including Odumejo, Salawa Beni, Opa Jobi. Adeori, Omokuri, Jamalaya, and Ebo Gyoloro, just to mention a few. As an outstanding A-list actress, how was she able to manage to adapt to different ranges of roles that she has played in the course of her career? For her, it is easy because she practices a lot. What is the most awkward or strangest role that she has played in her entire career? None for her because she does her role perfectly. Did she have any time at all that she wanted to quit acting career? No. Or what keeps her interested in this career every morning that she wakes up? For her, it is the pride and honor attached to the job. How important are Nigerian roots, morals, values, knowledge, and sense of wisdom to her and her works? She writes her stories that relate to her morals, values, and creates avenue where it will reflect and transform and educate the viewers. On stories and scripts or screenplay of her films, and its impact on Nigerian and African cultural values, home and abroad. How does she manage to harness, keep and pass them across in her films? According to her, they introduce the values and morals into the characters in the play such that it will project the importance of our values and culture. And in the case of Nigeria, she writes her stories that talk about our unity. Five years ago, when she celebrated her 55th year's birthday, and 35 years in acting, she shared a special lesson that life has taught her. In her words, life has taught me not to rely on fellow human beings. Don't think you have friends. Make God your only friend because if anything happens to you, those you think are your friends will be the first to run away. They will just abandon you to your fate. I learned that nothing in life is permanent, that there are no permanent friends and enemies. During my travels, I learned lessons about the ups and downs of life. Where does she see the Nigerian film movie industry in the next couple of years? 
the industry will be so large with a global audience and international reputation, she said. Why she's not working, either acting, producing, directing, or making a film, what does she do or how does she pass the time? She plays with the, her children and back then she used to plait their hair. What are her hobbies and interests? She likes praying to God. She also mentioned that she likes people that are loyal and God-fearing. What kind of music does she listen to? Her favorite songs are Islamic songs. Is there any international actor that she want to work with if the opportunity presented itself? For her, it is Eddie Murphy. How would she personally want her fans to remember her? They should remember her as an actress with a lovely talent and tiny bedroom voice. Seven years ago, this actress, Tawa Kiwande, popularly known as Yetunde Wumi, almost had her acting career truncated when she was arrested at the airport in Lagos. However, not long after that, this soft-spoken actress was able to pick up the pieces of her life together and she spoke with National Bureau on the lessons she learned through her ordeal. What lessons exactly did she learn? She learned that above all, that God Almighty is a loving God, is merciful, he does as he wills, and is a God of a second chance. And then she intends not to misuse this real opportunity to amend her ways. She said, wash up the evil blemish the devil inflicted on her. And then she said she has also learned to take each day as it comes and never compare herself with others. She also learned to be contented with what she has and not to allow any luck to push her into trouble. She also learned to love God, appreciate people and rely on what she can do to earn her money. There are so many lessons that she has learned through that incident. Many believe that top Nigerians who are rich today have been involved in one drug or deal or the other before. She was asked about this, that what does she think about it? In her words, I would say it is wrong to believe every hearsay that comes your way. If we listen to these rumors, we are likely to be taken over by them and we may end up in trouble. Besides, what one person will do and escape, another person may do it and end up in a couple of problems. All I can say is that we should be weary of what we listen to because it is what we hear that will stay long on our minds. It is that which we play back on our minds. And if these things are negative, they can push us into negative acts. Take for instance, students in higher institutions, even secondary schools, if they go by the general notion that if they don't belong to a secret cult, they may not have it smooth on campus, they will be lured into wicked acts that are associated with cultists. The same thing goes for ladies. If they will go by the saying that there is nothing wrong in using what one has to get what one needs, they will easily go into prostitution, which will eventually lead them to all sorts of evil. If mothers want to join the bandwagon of the trend, they will not be able to lead their children aright. They will end up as failed mothers. I have tried to help myself by the options that I took, and like I said, I have learned my lessons. There is no hard situation that can make me get involved in any negative deals in my life, and that is just it. Or why some actresses' marriages fail? In our words, we want to keep our homes. There is no woman that goes into a marriage with the mindset of making it fail. The problem we usually encounter is that of full support and lack of understanding on the part of our men. Many of them can't endure or let me say cope with the dictates of our job. And because we love what we are doing, we find it hard to give it up for anything. Is this not contradictory to God's dictates that men are the heads of the homes and should be respected? It depends on how you look at it and what the situation is like in each instance. Men are the heads, but the same God also instructs that they should love their wives. Loving their wives should include loving and caring for what makes her happy, especially if it is in the interest of the family. Most men are self-centered and this is bad. Mind you, broken homes are not limited to our world alone. It is everywhere. And I tell you, those things that contribute to our plight are equally applicable to those in other professions. What advice does she have for couples whose homes are on the verge of collapse? They should exercise patience with each other. They should talk more. When there is no gap between couples, they settle their matters easily and quickly. They should learn to listen to God and not their own interest. Husbands should take time to get to know details of the expectations of their wife's work and vice versa. Couples should respect each other and disallow third-party interferences in their affairs. Above all, they should pray and give each other chances to have their ways on issues, she said.
We have come to the end of this episode on Yesterday With Me, and we hope you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for our daily contents. And until next time, remain blessed.